Okay, so now what I will do is I will open the floor for uh, live interaction. In the meanwhile, we will also look at these uh, chat queries and if there are any queries that uh, have been missed out, we will uh, address them. But uh, so you can actually go to a few of these other centers. Uh, I would first like to just comment a little bit more on the question related to replicating a study that was done in one domain and is it okay to replicate it in a different domain. In fact, as uh, you just heard, it is possible and one idea that if you can find a partner who can repeat the study that you want to do in two different domains, then the two of you can pair up and as uh, mentioned earlier, you can form a group, you can form a partnership and both of you can work on the same idea in two different domains. And then you can bring out the comparison between the results in the two different domains. That is just one possible thing that you can do. 1185, over to you center 1185. Here before while answering somebody's question, uh, Ayer sir was telling that there should be a clear domain for a paper. But what about interdisciplinary papers? Yeah, that is fine. What he mentioned earlier is that yes, you can do a study in a domain, but if you want to do it in an interdisciplinary field, that is also okay. Uh, center 1183, over to you. Good evening, madam. So, what is the difference between the impact factor and H index normally given by the paper? We have mentioned this earlier, we will not answer questions like this because what is really important at this point is that you focus on your research study, you think of the your research design, think of what evaluation you will do and wh whether your idea is novel. So, we will not be answering questions like this. Thank you. Center 1256, over to you. So, any kind of research paper, what are the common areas to be addressed? I think we spend the entire day discussing exactly this. What are the common, what are some examples and what are the ideas, what are the features that must be there in different research studies? Center 1071, over to you. Good afternoon. You know, I, I had sent my proposal in which there is no improvement going to be done. I am just studying the student behavior from first year to second year. So this is only a study to say whatever effect you may make the system's common behavior remains the same. Can it become, I mean, without making an improvement or anything, an observation of the student behavior itself, by itself, does it uh, become a good paper? Because we say this will exist, whatever effort you may make to improve or not, the distribution of the marks uh, always remains, maybe the median may change, but the distribution uh, remains same. That is an observation I have made over a long period of time. Now, can this become a uh, paper sort of thing? Yeah, so uh, let me address this. Now, uh, can provided you, you still need to do a careful study. So, it cannot be a, a list of observations as you mentioned, it cannot be a list of observations that you have done over a period of time. It still has to be a careful study and this comes under the category of a what question. You are trying to understand what is going on and maybe you do not have a goal of improving something. So, the two things that you will still have to do are show that the work that you have done is sound by following the scientific research methods and the second thing will be to show that nobody else has already said what you are going to say. So, if, if you are going to say something very broad and generic which is like okay, students motivation goes down as they progress. So, often this is a very common observation that they come in very enthusiastic in the first year and as the years progress there some of them get demotivated. So, observations of this type if they are going to constitute your main results then they are really not uh, adding any value to the knowledge in the domain. Okay, So, we can now go on to the next center which is uh, 1016. So my question is that uh, you said uh, paper 1 and paper 2 we have to select from our domain as a reference and then we have to write our paper and then this and we take the that literature review or the review of that paper and then we write the views of that part as we select our domain as a mechanical engineering then. So, let me repeat the question for the benefit of the other uh, uh, centers. The 
the question is that can we look at the literature review section of the two papers A and B in order to write the comparison of them, of the two uh, papers? Yes, the answer is yes, you can do that. And often that is the section that you want to look at in a paper because that is what will also tell you what is different that that author is doing from other works. So the answer to that question is yes, you can do that. Yeah, so over to 1116. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question is this one. Which one is better to patent the uh, novel idea you have published the research paper? Okay, so this session is about wanting to publish your research paper, okay? So there, this is a very old debate and it really is out of scope for this uh, workshop. This workshop is really about if you want to publish it as a research paper. So now whether is it better to patent the idea or to publish it as a research paper is a call that you have to take because they are entirely two different approaches. As far as we are concerned at IIT Bombay, we believe in the ideas being in the public domain. So we would say that at least educational ideas are worth putting out into the public domain rather than going the patenting route. So let us move on to the next center. So this is center 1140. Hello. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, uh, my question is simple. Uh, I'm from computer science department. And again, uh, can I do a research like this? Capturing students' interest or assessing students' interest in a classroom environment. Okay, this is, if the, can I keep uh, this as a research topic in a computer science domain? So, uh, once again, this is a topic that you can take as the broad problem. So, as you saw in the morning session, a good paper has two things. One is a broad problem statement and a very specific problem statement. So, this broad problem statement is okay, but then there will be hundreds of other papers which have also worked on this broad problem statement. So what you will have to do is to look at what is the additional thing that you are going to do in this and that is what will become your specific problem statement. So you can go ahead with this, spend some time thinking about what will be your specific problem statement and use that to do your uh, next assignment. Let me add to this a little bit. Uh, in the afternoon, in the earlier sessions, we talked a lot about improving student learning. And when you start doing your literature search, you'll see that some of the papers indeed target student motivation, student interest, student engagement, and so on. In the, these kind of papers, you have to be a little more careful than those of student learning, because just as you heard now, everybody wants to improve student interest. It's a very common problem. So apart from establishing what additional thing you did in terms of your strategy or your treatment, one more aspect you can consider is if your audience is special in any way. So suppose you have non-computer science students or if you have high school students who are normally not in computer science and you want to keep them interested in, com in a computer science course for any reason. Then you can think of a strategy which is uh, focused on this particular audience and then it'll, it, it can start, you can start thinking of a research study along those lines. That what, how did the strategy help this particular audience keep an interest in computer science, even though computer science wasn't what they were required to do? Center 1056, over to you. Madam, good evening. Is there any particular order to mention the items in the paper, uh, in the morning which you have given in, in the worksheet? Uh, yes, there is an order and we have shown some examples earlier. So what you can do is look at the strong paper for one such example and look at this, look at the slides where, uh, uh, the slides where we analyzed a strong and weak paper. There was one slide which said a well written paper has a consistent flow. So the order must be logical and consistent which means you have to start with the problem before you begin the solution. and your solution approach has to come before the results. They all have to be connected to each other and so on. You'll get a better idea of this when you start reading more papers and you'll see how uh, the sections are connected to each other and how there's a logical flow from one section to another. 1063, over to you. Can the idea be topic specific rather than domain specific? Uh, can you clarify that a little bit more? What do you mean? Can you say more? Uh, 
yeah for example if domain is a area of computer networks can i have a specific topic in this domain yes you can do that but at some point you have to establish why the problem is important and if you have a topic which can be where you can establish that lo student learning of this topic is important then you can go ahead with this research study on the other hand if you are looking at a topic which is very narrow and may not be of much interest then you have to work a little bit harder to establish the importance of the problem but broadly speaking yes you can look at a learning of a specific topic so let me add to that uh, what we are uh, let's say in the area of computer networks you pick the topic of routing and you have come up with some very interesting uh, way of teaching routing to students now it might be okay to do a research to find out what is the learning that has happened in the area of routing for your students but you also have to think about it from the perspective of readers so will a reader how many readers will be interested in seeing what your idea is so that is the main point that you must keep in mind so this such ideas will be interesting only to a very small subset of readers so that is the reason it is very important to show that there is some generalizability to your idea so even though you may have done your study in the in the topic of routing you have to show that what is this property in the topic that you have used which will also be found in other topics so therefore the way you have carried out what we call as the treatment the tre all these terms you will learn in the uh, next session where you carry out the way in which you have delivered the topic what is different that can be also applied in the other topic so that is something which you have to bring out clearly okay there seems to be one more person with some question so i will take that sir whenever a research work is being carried out it is to be carried out in the present scenario, scenario what it uh, appears to be the most of the technical things whatever we do and whatever we present it is if it is given to five five six uh, judges or five six uh, doctorate people they all give different suggestions is there any standardized rule for it okay so the question is that if you present your idea to five six different people they all give five six different suggestions so the answer to that is you should be happy that five six people gave you only five six suggestions and not 10 to 12 suggestions see the thing is every referee will have their own perspective so every some referee for example may give more importance to novelty some other referee may give more importance to the result how how much better the result is and a third referee may not bother so much about novelty nor about the improvement but may bother about have you done the work very carefully so depending upon these things you will get these type of comments and you have to decide which of them are important for you and you have to submit it again so it will also be possible that there will be some referees they will themselves not agree with each other somebody will say it's a good paper somebody will say it's a bad paper so all of those things are possible so you have to treat their comments in a constructive manner and wherever they are saying that this paper can be improved in this manner you have to use that in order to improve your paper so that the next time these holes in the paper get plugged 1107 over to you center 1107 uh, we have one specific question that uh, uh, for big for beginners what should be the uh, size of the group of students uh, where in some idea is to be experimented okay this is a good question it's also a difficult question to answer because broadly speaking the larger number of students there are in your study this will be called a sample again we learn this technical term next time but the larger number of students you have in your study the stronger your results will be because you can then talk about generalizability and your statistical methods will work better and so on on the other hand sometimes you are limited in terms of the number with just what you have and you will have to work with it and you'll have to try to argue why in spite of having a, not a very large number your results are uh, significant or your results actually can be generalized and so on so I, as you can see i have not really answered your question directly so far uh, so let yeah. me add so one way in which you can do this 
is by conducting what are called pilot studies. So you can take a few students, you know, maybe four or five students. Once you have got your idea, you take four or five students. Don't conduct a semester long experiment. Conduct a very short experiment, maybe of two hours. You teach them something. And then you, you ask them in what, what is called qualitative research techniques, which you will learn in the next session. You can ask them some questions. And in order to determine whether your idea is working out or not working out. So you will get a feel for are you progressing in the correct direction or not. And once you get the feel that you are progressing in the correct direction, then you can go for a quantitative study, which will, for which the thumb rule is that you should have about 30 students in your class. In each group. In each group that you are uh, having. So you may have one control group in which you are not implementing your idea to see what is the performance. And you will have one experimental group in which you are implementing the idea in which to see what is the performance. So 30 plus 30, 60 is a good number, is what is considered. OK, since this is such an important question, let's talk a little bit more about it. The pilot study is mostly or is important to establish for yourselves first that your materials or your strategy is indeed making sense. Because when you start doing your studies, it is not very beneficial if you implement the study in a very large class and find out that due to one small glitch that happened or one small thing you hadn't kept in mind, everything failed. So for everybody who's thinking of a study, the recommendation, in fact, the requirement is that do a pilot first with five or 10 people. See what happens, refine your strategies, refine your materials, so that now you know that your strategy or the treatment is indeed working. But the pilot by itself cannot be written as a research paper. Unless you do some very thorough qualitative studies, which we may or may not get to next time, we will see how it goes. But typically, pilots alone cannot be written up as uh, research papers if the pilot has only about 10 students. On the other hand, even though the recommended number is 30 and 30, and there's a reason for that, the statistical methods you use will will not work or they're not valid unless you have numbers at least that big. And these are really rules of thumb. It, it, you should not say that I had 30 and that's why I'm fine. But unless you have larger numbers, your statistical methods won't work. So let's say you have 25 and 28, what to do? I would say go ahead with your study, do your statistics. And in the analysis, you have to show how believable your results are. So the two points I wanted to make is that do pilot plus something else, because the pilot alone won't be sufficient. And secondly, think of the analysis when you're, uh, think of some uh, novel way of doing the analysis when you have small numbers. And I have a third point to add here. If you have small numbers and you show that your result is valid using two different methods, then your result is strong. So you can have a, a quantitative study between two groups and follow it up with interviews when you have small numbers so, uh, to show that the, your uh, solution indeed is working. OK, let's go on to center 1227. Now, whether the uh, research is the always new innovation, or can we address the old problem in the new scenario? So the question is that, always do we always have to come up with something new or can we address the old problem in the new scenario so once again the what you have to do is to look at that slide on positioning of your work and bring out the difference from prior work very clearly so if the difference is simply in the scenario and if there is nothing uh, new that you are doing in order to adapt it then the chances are that the referee is not going to be impressed by this work. He is simply going to say, okay, this is an application of known work. So there is, there is no novelty is what the referee is likely to say. So what you have to do is, if you are going to take existing work and apply it in new scenarios, you have to carefully see how to adapt the work. What are the changes that you are making? Why are you making those changes? Those are the questions that you have to keep in mind. Yeah, so by now I think it's getting clear to most of you that if you have a novel idea to begin with or a novel problem, it's a little easier for you to do your research study and to write a paper than if you take an old problem and simply apply it in a different scenario. 
and that is the reason we harped so much on novelty in the morning and that is again the reason why we would encourage you to challenge yourself, push yourself beyond going beyond the standard ideas that everybody implements. So, you still have time to either change your idea or refine your idea, push it up a little bit. So, spend these few days to think very hard and see what is the extra interesting novel thing that you can do to your idea so that your experimentation becomes easier. Center 1028, 1028 mm -hmm. over to you. Is it more applicable to review paper? So, I Out think the question is about can we write review papers? So, the thing is that we are talking about there that is a different category of papers, review papers and they also have their own uh, level of rigor that is required. So, this workshop is about writing research papers where you take your own idea, something that you have done yourself, not something that others have done and you develop it into a research paper. So, review papers is what you do as the literature survey part is the amount of review that we are talking about. Simply writing review papers also is a way of inviting referees to reject your work. So, you may spend a lot of time reading papers and summarizing it and writing it up as review papers, but typically referees tend to not consider these seriously unless there is a lot of rigor in the review, unless there is something new which is being done. So, the referee's question at this point will be that if I can also do the same Google and find the same papers and get the same information, why should I read something that you have written? So, our advice to you is that do not go in the direction of review papers at this point. Take your own idea and try to see what is the study that you can do in order to develop it further and convert it into a research paper. In fact, in many conferences, if you read the call for papers, there is a sentence quite prominently that says that original research work is only accepted for submission. And if you even submit a review paper, it may not even go to the referee. It might get rejected even before going to the referee because they are not even considering review papers. So, why this in the, these two uh, days and this entire week of the workshop, we will only con uh, consider research studies of original ideas. Center 1229, over to you. Ma'am, I want to ask uh, if, uh, if any innovative idea I have, uh, I will have to take reference of my domain subject to prove that idea. I might have to refer to uh, a different subject also for comparing two ideas. So, is it okay first of all, uh, in order to prove the, uh, the result, I need comparison between uh, two different domains. Is this okay, first of all? Is my question clear? Okay. So, the question is clear. So, what you are asking is that do you need to implement your idea in two different domains? And uh, the answer is that is actually really very good if you are able to do that. What is sufficient? is that you implement your idea for two different groups even in the same domain. So, if you can say that there is one group in which your idea has not been implemented and they have shown some X performance on whatever metric whether it be learning or whether it be engagement and then you have an another group in which you have implemented your idea and they have done better on the same metric. So, that is sufficient for many cases. And if you can go one more step and say that the same method I am implementing in another domain and in another uh, area, that is even more powerful because it goes towards showing the generalizability of your approach. But uh, one more query, uh, as you reach from specialization to generalization, uh, obviously there is difficulty as you said, it will be difficult. Uh, so, idea which worked in two groups in one subject might not uh, give uh, correct results in another subject, then whether that paper will be still uh, uh, correct in that uh, yeah, sense. Advice, yeah, I mean the idea which is proved good in one domain might not prove correct in another domain. Uh, then is it a correct idea in education technology? Okay, so what you are talking about is the idea of the scope of applicability of your results and the way a scientific domain is built up is you start from a narrow scope first, show that your idea does indeed work within the narrow scope. So, you take one domain, establish very thoroughly that it works by having a control group and an experimental group and so on. Once it is established that it works in one domain, only then you can 
I think it's worthwhile starting to think about moving to another domain. Because right in the beginning, if you show that it works to some extent in one, not in the other, then the focus is lost for a paper. So as a, for the first paper, for a study, take one domain, do it thoroughly, and then you can go to another domain. One, two, eight, three. Over to you. Actually, uh, we want to know that suppose uh, in some of the research papers, I have seen some uh, methodologies are discussed, different types of methodologies are discussed. Suppose uh, on soft computing, certain methodologies are discussed there. So if there is no uniqueness, so can it be considered as a research paper at all? If only the methods are uh, expressed in different ways? No, as you saw, I mean, as you yourself said, these are not strong research papers if you only take the methodology and explain them in different ways. So for a paper to be a strong research paper, there needs to be some original idea, there needs to be some evaluation of it as we saw the rest of today. So let me add that it is not that every paper that is published is a strong paper. So, and it is not true that every paper that you come across in your area and you read is a strong paper. So that is the purpose of the morning's exercise to help you to distinguish between strong papers and weak papers. Now you might have the thought about how do weak papers actually get published. Now there are several reasons for that and we don't want to go into those reasons. Our objective is to get us ourselves to write strong papers. So what is it that we need to do in order to write strong papers is our focus. So whenever you come across papers which you now can clearly identify as weak papers, don't be any doubt. It is a weak paper and don't go along that route. Center 1173. Hello. Uh, yeah. Is there any famous book that we can refer in this area? Or, and I am, I am, if I am interested in doing PhD in this area, what kind of subject can be selected as a coursework? Uh, some references we will post on Moodle this week, especially for textbooks. There are some standard textbooks on research methods in educational technology. We'll post the links to, uh, we'll post the references of those books. Center 1075, over to you. Can you add mental exercising technique to improve teaching learning process in research paper? You can, provided you describe what you mean by it and establish that it's indeed a valid technique for the goal that you want to achieve. So let me add that such uh, techniques typically fall in the domain of psychology more than in the domain of uh, educational technology. So educational technology has to either deal with the discipline or it has to deal with the technology. So uh, sure, this is a very valid thing to do that, okay, you can ask your students to, let's say, you know, I have even seen papers like, okay, you ask your students every once in a while to get up and you know, clap their hands. So it improves uh, student attention. There is nothing really uh, uh, laughable about these ideas. These are good ideas. And you may also have some other exercises for getting students to pay more attention or even to improve their uh, abilities for the subject. But then uh, you will have to refer to related work. See, always this related work is the thing that you want to keep in mind. Now, you have got this idea and you have to look for the related work saying who else has attempted mental exercises for improving whatever it is that you are working on. And that work you will mostly find in the psychology domain or in the pure education research domain rather than in the education technology domain. So that is where you will have to then go and compare. So it will become a little bit harder for you to work on problems of that nature. There was one more point that we briefly touched upon earlier today that when you're proposing a solution for the problem, you have to first argue and show why it might even be a possible solution. So if you take something like mental exercises, even before going on to the evaluation, the reader has to get a, some intuition that, okay, this, is, this might work. And that part you'll have to do a lot more carefully since it's not tied specifically to the domain. Center 1254, over to you. Hello. Good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, my, my question is that what is literature survey and how to perform literature survey and uh, what are the sources from where I can get correct data from the internet on which I can depend that this is correct data? 
Okay, so uh, the question was what is literature survey and how to do it and as we mentioned earlier, we there will be a link to a video posted because we have done a similar session in one of the earlier conferences. So the link to the video will be posted and some sources of uh, good sources of literature for educational technology, a list will also be posted and you will need this for your assignment. So please go look at those resources and I think that should answer your question. Uh, these will be up by tomorrow. Center 1147, over to you. May I use the uh, assessment tools such as direct and uh, indirect assessment tools for to show the evidence and uh, results of my original idea? Okay, so in fact, you should be using assessment, some form of assessment to show that your idea works. And if you already pick up an assessment tool that exists and show why that assessment tool is suitable to study or to apply to your situation, it's better because somebody else has done the hard work of developing the assessment tool and showing that it's a robust assessment tool. So you need assessment to show that your idea works and you, if you do it in multiple ways, it's even better. If you do it using tools or instru assessment instruments such as some questionnaires that have already been tested, that's also good. Center 1269. My question is, uh, my question is, what are the concept of the review paper for the particular research topic based on the educational technology? Because I am a beginner for a research field. So can we, uh, we actually, suppose that we have in some uh, topic and uh, work with the forum related topic on the based on educational technology. Uh, it will be best method to implement a review paper for the comparative studies, lots of comparative studies of research paper. We already answered the question about the review paper. So please refer to the answer that we gave earlier that we are not here only referring to original research papers. <coughs> Secondly, to do the literature review section, if you look at the assignment that will be posted, that, ha that tells you what to do and how to compare the different papers. One, two, four, five, over to you. A Chinese proverb is there, when the student listens, they forget. When they see or visualizes, they remember. But when they do it, they learn. So I think that it is what the education technology. My question is that uh, in the slides shown, some numbers are there, 3, 8, 10, 18, 26, 32, 37. So how to index them or how to uh, maintain the sequence? for the citations. Okay, so those, uh, all of that, how to uh, maintain the paper. So the example that was shown are, those numbers are from the original paper, that source which I have quoted at the bottom. Right. And whichever, uh, uh, so in their paper, that is the third reference, eighth reference, tenth reference and so on. And whichever conference that you submit your paper to, they will tell you a mechanism in which you have to submit the references. So every conference, they will either follow something called IEEE style or ACM style or some other style. So there is a very standard way of quoting these references. And uh, one way of getting to know them is to read a few papers and see the way they have quoted the references and simply follow that pattern. One, two, five, seven. Sir, sometimes it's uh, not possible to... Um, uh, it's not possible to get the uh, appropriate validation tool when you are making any simulation study of the conceptual system or dynamic stochastic uh, simulators. So it becomes difficult to select the validation tools. Can you suggest any other alternative in such cases? Okay, so the question is about uh, a specific domain, a specific topic in a specific domain. And uh, really this is part of doing the research, finding the tool. And if there is no validation tool, then uh, you have to do the work in order to develop one. So I am not an expert in your domain. So I will not be able to offhand tell you which is the tool that is to be used. But uh, the way to get there is to do your literature survey and see what are the tools that the papers that are similar to your idea. So that section, the next assignment, when you do the table, when you create that table, that is where you will be able to find out what are the commonly used tools for validating or evaluating your idea. 1145, over to you. 
can you give an example other than a valid can you give a um, example other than marks for evaluating or uh, for taken as a value for evaluating our strategy impact of our strategy on students Okay, so this is a very good question, and in fact, um, you want to try to answer? Yeah. So, um, uh, other than marks, yeah. what other things can we measure? So, marks is just one of the measures. So, one thing that you can see is what is the improvement in the student's thought process. So, there are techniques that you can see uh, that you can use to see the improvement in the thought process. Okay, so uh, these are actually a little bit out of scope for our uh, workshop. So even though it's a good question, it's a little beyond this workshop. So it, it cannot be answered in one week to how to use these techniques. So these are, I mean, you know, there are techniques called content analysis and uh, other such techniques which you can use to see what is the learning that has happened. So it's a good question because marks are not the only indicator for uh, student learning. But then the way we get around it is by validating the exam paper. Okay, so the exam paper is called the instrument. So the, what we do is that you want to check that your instrument is actually measuring what you want to measure. So these are called validity tests that you perform on the in instrument in order to make sure that your instrument is actually measuring what you want to measure. And that is the way in which we simplify our lives by going back to marks. But there are other ways in which uh, learning can be measured. OK, so uh, let me add to that since uh, there's a lot to say here. Uh, let me first start with some very simple other metrics that you can see. And this again depends on uh, the numbers you have and the length of your experiment and so on. So suppose your study is about a very specific topic or it, it's, it's some set of topics in a discipline. The exam, on the other hand, might cover a lot of topics in that subject. So what you can do is construct a small, take a small subset of questions from the exam and show that, uh, establish the validity, show that these five questions indeed are uh, going to measure what you want to measure and use the results only on those five questions to, uh, to show your results. That's one thing you can do. Because the exam marks, the overall exam marks might not, in fact, be directly connected to your strategy. Um, hmm? Okay, so we'll come back to this question. Let's put it like that. We'll talk a little bit more about this next time. One zero seven six over to you. Uh, my question is: How many reference papers should be included for writing a good quality paper? And uh, should we include the pioneer papers related to our domain or topic as reference paper? Okay, the answer to your first question is as many as are required. And I know that uh, that can either say a lot or doesn't say anything. But what the reason you, re you include reference papers is there, there are several reasons. And you have to go by the reasons and not by the numbers. Some of the reasons are to show what other work, what other significant work or important work has been done to address the problem what similar work exists uh, related to your solution and use these references to, to bring out the gaps in the existing work. So you have to really do your literature survey until you can find a story that this, this is the work that's done and here are the important gaps and here is how my work addresses that gap. So th the answer could be as small as 5 or it can be as large as 50. Two more questions. Let's take 1207. My question is, uh, my question is, uh, today's research paper, most of the research papers are uh, the data that is adopted is just uh, cut and paste type of and uh, how these research papers add an improvement to the society because uh, on the practical ground the society is suffering very badly. The environment pollution that is a very big problem. So uh, first of all, first of all this question is somewhat off topic. And uh, so it's, uh, we are not, like I mentioned earlier, we are not looking at papers which are weak papers or bad papers. We are only concerned with writing good papers ourselves. So let us please focus on that and not worry about topics like why are other people doing something else and things like that. The one important point in the question that you asked is about the copy paste. So one of the things that we will be taking up in the next session is that 
why you should not do any copy paste in your own work. So let us keep the attention on doing good work ourselves rather than worrying about why other people are doing other things. Okay, let's take one last question. 1150, over to you. Hello, good evening, madam. Uh, we have uh, presented a paper on role of e-learning through ICT for management students. Now, we, if we repeat that for engineering students, will it be a new research? We have answered this question at least two times earlier and the answer stays the same and it's about taking work done in one domain and transferring it to other. So, you have to do the work more carefully, you have to bring out what's new and so on. We answered this twice before, so I would request you to refer to those. Okay, the last question from center 1161. Uh, madam, here uh, actually today you have discussed about the paper A and paper B. It is uh, uh, having different domains, but even also you have given a task for the analysis and uh, strong paper, weak paper regarding this you have given a task. And uh, one more is in next, uh, next week or uh, uh, whatever the session, we are expecting about the uh, research uh, uh, regarding one paper, how it is going on, on uh, practical oriented way it is better because theoretical it is lost uh, also research is conducted. A sample paper if you are showing top to bottom everybody will get clear idea ok this way we can make a paper and one thing on that paper if you are using any research tool and uh, to uh, how to apply on that that is give the more uh, idea about the total overview about the a research paper, my idea. Thank you, over to you. So, uh, the, about the sample paper, see one of the papers is paper A itself because that is a sample of a good paper and you can look at it to see what all should be there in your paper. And the other such sample papers you will find when you look at uh, papers in your domain. So, when you do the assignment, you are supposed to find those three papers and as you look for those papers, you will find these samples. So, there are no samples which can be put up which are universally useful for everybody. So, that is the reason why we cannot do that task. And uh, now, we find that there are still a large number of centers. Unfortunately, we cannot connect to all of them because it is 545 and many people do need to leave and catch buses and go home. So, uh, because we have about 200 centers, it is unfortunate that this kind of thing is going to happen. What we can assure you is that do post your queries on Moodle and we will take a look at those queries and the ones which are of broad uh, applicability, we will answer that. And even the chat forum, whatever questions have been already posted, we will be looking at the chat forum and looking uh, and removing the ones which are applicable to everybody and we will post the question and the answer on Moodle. And as we mentioned earlier, all the slides will also be posted on Moodle slides assignment and all of those. So, you do not have to ask questions related to that on Moodle that will just clog up the discussion forums. Slides, assignments, these will all be posted, do not worry about that. Okay, then that brings us to the end of this session and uh, thank you very much for being with us and we hope to see you again on Moodle doing the assignments doing the submissions and also next week where you will learn a lot more about how to create research papers rigorously and hopefully many of you will be there in the paper submission draft and we will have a lot of difficulty in finding the 200 papers. So, we will be very happy when our job of selecting the 200 papers becomes difficult because there are so many good ideas and so many good paper drafts that have been submitted.